So we basically covered all the rules you might encounter or you might be able to use to help you simplify algebraic expressions or do arithmetic. Um, but there are a couple of special kinds of exponents that I want to talk about uh, that do come up and that can help you. Um, so let's go back to our example that we used for the quotient rule, but we're going to flip it over. So before we had 5 to the 7th on the top, and we had 5 to the 3rd on the bottom. But what if it was 5 to the 3rd on the top and 5 to the 7th on the bottom? So now we've got more 5's on the bottom than we do on the top. But if we write it out, well, I've got 5 times itself 3 times on the top, and I've got 5 times itself 7 times on the top, on the bottom, excuse me. Seven. Okay. All right. So now I can cancel again. So I've got five over five makes one, and five over five makes one, and five over five makes one. And sometimes we forget there's a secret ones up here when we do this canceling. So what we're actually left with is one on the top, right? All of our fives went away, and we just got one. And then four of these fives on the bottom. So that leaves us with, leaves us with five to the fourth power. Um, but, so we've got one over five to the fourth. Well, okay, let's go back to using our quotient rule. So our quotient rule told us to take the top number and subtract the bottom number. It still works, even though our numbers are... Um, the top one smaller than our bigger one, our, our bottom one. So if I do that, I get 5 to the 3 minus 7. Well, 5 to the 3 minus 7 gives me negative 4. So I have 5 to the negative 4. So that means 5 to the negative 4, if this guy is equal to this guy, which is equal to this guy, which is equal to this guy, equals is what we call transitive. So if one thing is equal to another, and then that's equal to something else, then the two things on the end have to be equal to each other for that to be true. So 5 to the negative 4 is equal to 1 over 5 to the 4th. And so this is the rule or sometimes referred to as the rule for negative exponents. It's what negative exponents mean. Negative exponents tell us that we've got a fraction going on in here. Um, and so the rule looks like this, written abstractly. You might see it. So this is negative exponents. So it says if you've got a to the minus the, a negative number, that's the same thing as 1 over that number to the positive power. And it actually works out that if you've got 1 over a, a number raised to a negative power, right, it becomes a to the positive power on top. And you can think of it as over 1. But this is really just the same thing as a to the positive n, because anything divided by 1 is just itself. And so how I remember this one, if an exponent is negative, it becomes positive when it crosses the line. So when it cross, in order to make it positive, it has to cross that fraction bar. So for this guy, for him to become positive, for the exponent to become positive, we had to cross the fraction bar and drop into the bottom of the fraction. And this one, for the exponent to become positive, we had to cross the fraction bar, meaning go into the numerator for the exponent to become positive. And so that's what it means to have negative exponents. So we could look at an example, just a quick one. If I've got 2 to the negative, I don't know, 12. Okay, so we've got 2 to the negative 12. So this guy becomes, in order for the exponent to become positive, which we, we prefer positive exponents, if, if uh, algebraic expression isn't simplified unless all the exponents are written positively. So we, need, we see this is negative, and so in order for that to become positive, it has to go below the fraction bar. Um, so sometimes it's easier to think about over 1, if that helps. So what I'm going to do is um, move the 
2 into the bottom. And so that's going to leave me with a 1 on the top, not a 0, right? So this becomes 2 to the positive 12. Um, maybe you have another one where you've got, let's say we've got 4 over 5 to the negative 2. Well, I don't like this negative 2. So again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to move the 5 to the top of the fraction bar, and it's always times between, and the 2 becomes positive. If it wasn't times, you couldn't use this rule. Um, and then wherever, wherever the 5, or wherever, whatever we're taking from the top to the bottom, we just leave behind a 1. Just like here, if we, when we went from the top to the bottom, we left behind a 1 on the top. We went from the bottom to the top, we left behind a 1 on the bottom. But anything divided by 1 is just itself, so in this case we actually don't really need the 1. And you can multiply that out, you get 100. Um, but yeah, that's how we, we deal with negative exponents. We make them positive first so that we can see what they, what they are and work with the positive exponents because we know how to deal with those a lot better.